Okay, so hi everyone. Today we're going to be continuing our discussion on inherited ataxias. So our last class was on an autosomal dominant inherited ataxia that is spinocerebellar ataxias. Today is going to be on an autosomal recessive inherited ataxia which is very very important for the exam that is Friedrich's ataxia. So as I had mentioned in my earlier video, I've uploaded all my notes on this app called Neuraxis Pro which is available on Google Play Store and also in, uh, and also in the App Store under my institute. So I put the link and the code in the description so you can go ahead and access my notes over there. I have uh, posted notes for all the videos I've taken till date on this channel. Okay, now let's go into the class. So Friedrich's ataxia is the most common inherited ataxia. Okay, Fif it comprises of 50% of all inherited ataxia. So this is a very very important MCQ point. So what is the most common inherited ataxia? It is Friedrich's ataxia. Now come to the genetics. So as we had discussed earlier, it is an autosomal recessive inheritance in, co in uh, contrast to spinocerebral ataxias and episodic ataxias which have an auto autosomal dominant inheritance. Okay. So coming to the classical form. Okay, the classical form is due to mutation in the frataxin gene which is present on chromosome 9. I think most of us are acquainted to this. So frataxin is a mitochondrial protein. So frataxin is a mitochondrial protein which is very very important for iron homeostasis. So what happens is in Friedrich's ataxia there is going to be decrease in expression of this frataxin gene product. So the patient is going to have increased intracellular accumulation of iron which leads on to irreversible cell injury. So that's what's going on in the cellular level in this ataxia. And just like spinocerebellar ataxias, it is a trinucleotide repeat disorder. But here the trinucleotide that is repeated is GAA. Very very important question. So we have GAA trinucleotide repeats in the first intron. So normal people are going to have 7 to 22 repeats. Whereas in Friedrich's ataxia, the patients are going to have 200 to 900 repeats. So don't forget GA and don't forget autosomal recessive and frataxin. Okay, now coming to the other rare genetic causes of Friedrich's ataxia. So these two are because of vitamin E deficiency. So these genetic variants are going to cause Friedrich's ataxia by causing vitamin E deficiency. So now let's look into them. So we have A beta lipoproteinemia which is also known as basin convex syndrome. So here there is a mutation in the microsomal triglyceride transfer protein. Okay, so as you know VLDL is formed and secreted from the liver and VLDL is what is going to carry vitamin E. So because there is mutation in the MTP, there is going to be impaired formation and secretion of VLDL from the liver. And because of this, vitamin E is not going to reach the peripheral tissues. It's not going to reach the peripheral tissues. So this is what's happening in A beta lipoproteinemia. The other genetic variant is ataxia with vitamin E deficiency, that is AVID. This is because of mutation in the alpha tocopherol transfer protein. Okay, so for vitamin E to bind to VLDL, you require this alpha tocopherol transfer protein. So since this is mutated over here and it's not working, vitamin E cannot bind to VLDL. So again, causing deficiency of vitamin E in the peripheral tissues. So these are the two important uh, rare genetic variants of Friedrich's ataxia that you have to remember. Don't forget A beta lipoproteinemia. Okay, now coming to the neuropathology. So the primary sites of involvement over here are going to be the spinal cord, the dorsal root ganglion and the peripheral nerves. So in spinal cord, you're going to have involvement of the spinocerebellar tracts, the lateral corticospinal tracts and the posterior columns. And remember, one of the earliest structures, structures to be involved in Friedrich's ataxia is dorsal root ganglion. Very, very important MCQ question. And you're going to have a large fiber, peripheral, large fiber neuropathy because Preferentially, the large myelinated fibers are involved over here. And surprisingly, the involvement of the cerebellum and cerebral cortex is very minimal. This is only, only patients going to have only slight atrophy of the cerebellum and uh, cerebral cortex. So remember here, the main pathology is going to be in the spinal cord, the spinal cord, the peripheral nerves and the dorsal root ganglia. Okay, very, very important, cardiac pathology. So 90% of the Friedrich's ataxia patients are going to have cardiac involvement. And this most commonly takes the form of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So you can also have dilated cardiomyopathy in uh, Friedrich's ataxia but the most common type is 
hypertrophic cardiomyopathy so you're going to have myocyte hypertrophy and fibrosis subintimal or medial deposition of periodic acid shift positive material and myocytopathy with unusual pleomorphic nuclei so just don't forget this point myocyte hypertrophy very very important now coming to the clinical features so the age of onset in friedreich's ataxia is usually less than 25 years and the median age of death is going to be 35 years and don't forget the most common cause of death over here is cardiac so cardiac causes are the most common cause of death over here very very important mcq don't forget this and females have a better prognosis than male patients so we'll discuss the clinical features under neurological manifestations and extra neurological manifestations so come to the neurological manifestations so because of spinous cerebellar tract involvement you're going to have progressive ataxic gait frequent falls truncal titubation and remember your lower limbs are going to be involved more than your upper limbs and then nystagmus loss of fast saccades another another features of uh, cerebellar dysfunction like dysarthria dysmetria ataxia of the trunk and limb movements all because of spinous cerebellar tract involvement and very very important don't forget this the patient is going to have an extensor plantar with loss of deep tendon reflexes So you're going to have an extensor plantar because of pyramidal involvement. So the patient's corticospinal tracts are going to get involved. So because of this, you're going to get a Babinski positive or an extensor plantar, and loss of deep tendon reflexes is because of peripheral neuropathy. Is because of peripheral neuropathy. See what is the other uh, important neurological condition where you get this Babinski positive with absent deep tendon reflexes? It is subacute combined degeneration of spinal cord that is seen in vitamin B12 deficiency. Okay, so this is a very very important exam point, and also you can have weakness because of pyramidal involvement, where the distal muscles are going to involve get don't get involved more than the proximal muscles. Loss of vibratory sense and proprioception because of posterior column involvement, and a mild to moderate mental retardation and other psychiatric issues. And don't forget optic atrophy. This is again an important MCQ point. Optic atrophy will also be present in Friedreich's ataxia, and the patient can also have some degree of hearing loss. Now coming to the manifestations. Which are uh, uh, extra neurological manifestations. So cardiac manifestations, as we discussed earlier, ninety percent of the patients are going to have this. So the most common. So they ask an MCQ, what is the type of cardiomyopathy seen in Friedreich's ataxia? It's going to be hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So don't forget this point. They can also have conduction defects. Patient can also have atrial fibrillation. Okay, so these are important cardiac manifestations. Endocrine manifestations. Twenty percent of the patients are going to have diabetes mellitus. This is because of both. insulin resistance as well as beta cell dysfunction okay now coming to the musculoskeletal deformities patients going to have pes cavus pes equino varus and scoliosis so we discussed the genetic variants of friedreich's ataxia so now let's look into the clinical variants of friedreich's ataxia so as you know friedreich's ataxia is usually going to present less than 25 years usually in early adolescence but in case it's going to present after 25 years as it does so in 15% of the cases it's known as lofa that is late onset friedreich's ataxia and in case the patient so as you know patients are going to have loss of deep tendon reflexes so the patients having normal or exaggerated deep tendon reflexes it's known as far that is friedreich's ataxia with retained reflexes so these are important clinical variants that you have to remember for the exam okay now how are you going to diagnose friedreich's ataxia so it's a clinical diagnosis so mainly you're going to confirm the diagnosis only by genetic testing and if you happen to take an mri remember your cerebellum is going to be normal relatively normal there is not going to be any abnormalities in the cerebellum your main pathology is in the spinal cord dorsal root ganglia and the peripheral nerves so in mri you are going to see predominant spinal cord atrophy very very important going to be more specific the upper cervical cord is going to be atrophy okay now come to the treatment so like for any other inherited ataxia there's no uh, breakthrough treatment or any treatment that is going to change the course of the disease or improve the neurological manifestations but for friedreich's ataxia unlike for spinous cerebellar ataxia we do have a few drugs so for the exam don't forget this name it is idibinone it's a free radical scavenger it's given at a dose of 5 mg per kg per day but remember it does not help with the neurological issues okay it only improves the myocardial hypertrophy and the main side effects are going to be gi side effects so don't remember don't forget to remember id belon very very important for friedreich's ataxia okay next alpha alpha tocopherol quinone so this can cause a dose dependent improvement in the neurological uh, symptoms 
and this is especially useful in the rare genetic variants of retrix ataxia which are due to vitamin E deficiency okay that is uh, a beta lipoproteinemia and ataxia with vitamin E deficiency and remember iron chelators and antioxidant drugs are potentially harmful they can actually increase myocyte injury okay so they are best avoided and like for any other inherited ataxia your mainstay of treatment is going to be supportive therapy okay so i think i have covered most of the important points thank you